Before you can build anything with the OpenAI APIs, you first need an API key. If you've been looking for your API key and you can't find it, don't feel bad. The OpenAI dashboard's gotten more complex since the ChatGPT API first came out two years ago or so. What I'm gonna do in this video is show you how to find your API key. And second, we're gonna talk about what do you do with that API key once you get it, how do you keep it safe? How do you make sure that the internet doesn't steal it from you and rack up a whole bunch of charges and eventually get your account shut off? What is an API key? Uh, look, you can think of it just as like a key to your house. It is the thing that's going to unlock access. You can also think of it as a username, password, all rolled up into one big long string. So where do we find the string? Go to your dashboard, it's platform.openai.com. On the top right-hand corner, click on settings. On the left, click on API keys. On the top right, click create new secret key. Give your key a name, select a project. You can probably ignore these permissions for now. In the future, this is a way that you can have more fine-tuned control over what your API keys can and cannot do. But for now, you can probably just set to all. Create your secret API key and then copy this to a clipboard and now put your API key somewhere safe because this is the last time you'll ever see it on here. Uh, OpenAI will not display this API key to you again after you click this done button. You'll never get it back again after this. If that's all you needed, happy hacking, go have fun. But if you wanna hang around for just a minute, let's talk about what do you do with this API key. So let's first talk about a bit of an anti-pattern. What do you not do? You notice OpenAI has done a really nice job of putting a uh, code snippet right at the very top of the dashboard there. So we can just copy and paste that code snippet, put it in here, and now I'll demonstrate a bit of the anti-pattern. And OpenAI, to their credit, did not do this, but this is how you used to see most API providers get you started, which is you would uh, create the client to connect to the uh, API server, and then you would do something like this. And this still does actually work here with OpenAI, even though it's very much not suggested, but you can pass in an OpenAI key as a parameter when you're instantiating the client. And so you would come over to the API key that we had copied, and we'd paste it right here, and we'd save it. And this is called hard coding the API key into the source code, right? And so uh, from here, then we uh, might print the output. Maybe we change the message and we run this and it works and it's great. And it's like, hooray, you know, we got to hello world. But the problem is we just like planted a bomb inside of our source code here that is likely to go off at some point in the future when we're not expecting it. And that bomb is that we have included our secret API key in our source code. And it's super common to share that source code with other people either uh, you know, privately, like maybe you email it to folks because you're asking for help on it. Or what happens a lot of the time is that you upload it on GitHub and you don't realize that you're committing your code to a public repository, let's say. And as soon as this API key hits the internet, there are bots that are scraping, just for loops that are looking, 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 searching anytime an API key hits the internet and they just immediately snatch it up and then put it to use for you know spam purposes or just malicious purposes, whatever it is, but they'll use your API key as much as possible until it gets shut off by OpenAI. And so this can result in a lot of charges for you and it will ultimately result in your account being suspended. GitHub does have some protections in place these days and sort of like the obvious attack vectors are often protected against, but the best way to protect you from these sort of things happening is to uh, just never hard code your API key into your code. And so what is the preferred way to do that? And the preferred way to do this instead is using what's called environment variables. So here's how you set an environment variable. I'm going to copy my API key again. I'm going to come to my terminal and I'm going to say export open AI API key equals, and I'm going to put in my key and then I am going to type print env. And you can see now that my OpenAI key is a variable in the environment. And now we can use os.environ.get OpenAI key and load that variable from the environment. And so now the nice thing is that this, in, this uh, API key is set locally for me here in my environment, 
but I can copy and paste this code and I can send that around or I can publish it on the internet and I'm not giving away the secrets. Now, you may have noticed that the default code offered by OpenAI didn't mention anything about uh, import OS or os.environ.git. And that's because this pattern is so common that OpenAI does this for you. So if you delete this bit, if you don't pass in an API key, it will just assume that you have an API key stored under the environment variable openai underscore api underscore key, and it will look for it. And as long as you set that environment variable, you don't have to do anything else on this client instantiation. It will automatically find it for you. There is one other issue here, and that is I did go through and I had to manually set this openai key, but this environment variable is ephemeral. So as soon as I close this terminal, it will disappear. And so one way that we can save this is we can copy it. And if you're using a virtual environment in Python, which you probably should, you would create one of those by doing Python 3-M uh, VM, and then the name of the directory of the virtual environment VM. There's a lot of great videos out there for that. So I won't go into great detail here, but I do have a virtual environment set up. And you can see that's in this VN folder. And to activate that virtual environment, I run a script source VM slash bin slash activate. You can actually go look at that script, right? So if I come here into bin activate, and these are all just shell commands that are running, you can come right here in your activation script and you can scroll down to where it is already setting some exports and you can drop your command to export OpenAI API key directly in there in your activation script for your virtual environment. And you can save that. And now every time that you start that virtual environment, either you starting it manually or cursor will start it up for you when you open that folder, uh, your OpenAI API key will be set for you. And so this, when we talk about put your API key into a safe place, for a lot of you, that safe place is going to be in the activation script for your virtual environment. Now, another place you can put this is putting it into the ZSHRC or the bash RC. This is the sort of root activation script for uh, any time a terminal is loaded. You can stick it here, but now the downside is gonna be that um, you're always gonna be using the same API key for any project that you're working on on your computer. So this sort of negates some of the advantages you get from project-based API keys. And I found um, a better way is just to uh, set the API key inside of the virtual environment that you're working in, not to have one global one for your whole uh, machine. But you do you. Now, the other advantage of using environment keys is that oftentimes you're going to use different keys for when you're developing locally versus when you're publishing your app in production, right? So I, for instance, I like using render for a lot of my Python apps to publish them. And render has a whole section on the dashboard where I will add the API keys. So when I'm developing locally, I might have one API key. And then when I'm uh, pushing to production, I'd have a different API key. And perhaps those two API keys, they might be um, on totally different open AI accounts, or perhaps you just wanna track the usage differently. Perhaps you wanna have different limits or you have different sort of billing, but it's just generally gonna be best practice for you to use different keys in your different environments. Now there's one last tip for protecting your API keys. And that is if you ever film a video tutorial and reveal your API key in that, make sure that you come in and you revoke those API keys before you publish the video to YouTube.